Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Valerie Kaim, in case any of you are new, thanks for stopping by again for another video. You're going to have to excuse how my voice sounds because I have had a head cold um, for the past like five days now. So my voice is a little bit stuffy. Uh, it was so hot here lately over the summer. The month of August was so warm, um, like high 80s all the time. I'm very humid. And then the first day of September, it was this drastic temperature change. It was cold. So then the second day of September, I woke up with a head cold. I get a head cold about always every year whenever the temperature changes like that. So I should have just expected it. But bear with me a little bit today because this is just how I sound. So today's video is all about the second trimester recap and then I'm gonna touch a little bit on my third trimester to-do list. Before I get into it though, I wanted to make an announcement. I finally set up a P.O. box. I had several people message me like separately from YouTube and ask, uh, can I send you something? Can I do this? Do you have a P.O. box? And I just never did. And the only, way, writ, blah, the only way I would let somebody send something to me is if I had met them maybe or known them before. So here and there people have sent me stuff, but I always tell them I'm working on getting a P.O. box set up. So, but today's the day I can tell you it is finally set up, and I'm gonna have all the info down in the description box below, but if you would like to send me something ever, it's there for your convenience. I think I'm gonna roll these sleeves up. They, I'm just looking there in the camera, and they just look like an awkward length, so I'm gonna roll them. Anyway, as I was saying, don't forget to check out that stuff in the description box. You can see my P.O. Box address if you'd like to send me anything. You absolutely do not have to, but I just did this because several people were asking for it, so. With that being said, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get into the video. So, the second trimester, I believe it started at week 14 or something like that. I can never remember what weeks was the next trimester and whatever, but we're gonna go with that. And the first thing I'm going to do is to kick off the second trimester recap. At the beginning of the second trimester, the baby was the size of a lemon. And now today, I am 31 weeks pregnant. I'm well into the third trimester and the baby is now the size of a coconut, or my other app says it's the size of a head of cabbage. So, around that size. So, he's done quite a bit of growing, obviously, and the one of the best things about the second trimester was that's when I started to feel him move for the first time. First time I felt him move was on our baby moon that we went on in June. So, it was around like 18 weeks or something like that. Um, so that was one thing that was I loved about the second trimester. I felt him move every day since then and I'm so grateful for that. I haven't seemed to have a problem so far with getting him to move and things. And I'm going to show you guys the app that I really like to use. I have two different apps that I like to use to track the baby. This first one is called Ovia Pregnancy. And what I like about this one is it has a calendar that tells you, that tells you when you turn a new week. And it's just nice to track a calendar like that. And then the other thing I also really like about it is it has this little graph. It says if the baby could put its hand on your phone screen, this is the size it would be. The little pink hand is the size it would be if it could. And the other, the outlined hand is the size that it will be when it's born. And it does the same thing with its feet and stuff. And I just think it's fun to see like the size of his little hands and feet. That one's really cool. But then the other baby app that I actually like the best probably is be, is is called Baby Center and I feel like a lot of people use this one but the reason I like it is because they have way more lifelike realistic looking images of the baby. You can tap the little plus buttons and it tells you all the new developments for the week. So that one I really like and also does the same with your body. You can tap the little plus buttons and see like what's changing in your body this week and all that stuff. It's really interesting. So along with the second trimester, a little bit towards the middle to the end, one thing that was not very nice was my acid re reflux started to come back a little bit and it's still back. Um, I don't get it every day like I did in the first trimester, but that was one thing that I was kind of bummed about is it started to come back a little bit and, and I really can't complain about it though because it's not been every day. But I would say in general, the second trimester, I just felt so much better. Not that I was that sick in the first trimester, but I just felt more motivated to do things. I started working out more. The second trimester is kind of when I started doing more of my workout routine and things like that. And now going into the third trimester, I've kind of lost a little bit of my workout motivation. But I'm hoping to get back into it today. I'd like to work out after I film this video. But that was just really nice. I felt a little bit more like myself when I was in the second trimester. You know, like, I in the first trimester, I just felt so bloated all the time, and I felt like whatever little bit I'm showing, it was not from the baby. 
And the second trimester is when the baby bump starts to show a little bit. It looks more cute and you're not really uncomfortable. So it was just a really great trimester in all honesty. What else was in the second trimester? Oh, we also had our gender reveal, which I will link that up here for you guys if you didn't see that, which I think I already mentioned it in this video, though. We are having a boy, but if you want to see how we did our gender reveal, head over there and watch that. And I would say, like, that was such an emotional roller coaster for me, finding out the gender. I'm so glad we found out, but there's another part of me that thinks, like, with a future baby, I am kind of want to be surprised. I'm not really sure. I don't know. We'll have to see when we get there. But my first reaction when we found out was boy. I was so excited. Chip's smile was a mile wide. It was the cutest thing. And then all of a sudden I was kind of sad because I wasn't having a girl. But I, yeah, it was just a whole mix up of things. All in all though, I'm so excited that we're having a boy and that all of our future kids will have a big brother because I always, I had a big brother and I just really loved that. And so I really like that aspect of it. I like to think that, you know, all my other kids are going to have an older brother now, which I just think is nice. <laughs> I feel like my throat is getting so scratchy. We're going to take a break because I have to use the bathroom really quick and I will be right back. Okay, we are back. Okay, where was I? Oh, I was just getting ready to talk about something else that happened in the second trimester. I talked about it a little bit and that is the gestational diabetes test. I did a vlog the day that I had the day that I took the test, and I will link that one up here for you guys as well. But I never really came, told you guys the results, what happened after that, and I just thought I'm going to explain it a little bit, what happened. So for some reason at the beginning of my pregnancy, the gestational diabetes test, it was always something I was kind of afraid of because I so did not want to have it. That just felt so big to me to have follow a strict diet and all this stuff, and I didn't, obviously, I, don't, I mean, I don't know much about it, but I think the worse it is, the more strict you have to be with your diet, so I... I'm not quite sure about that. Do not quote me on that, but it just felt really big to me and it was something I was just always kind of afraid of because I knew at the beginning of my pregnancy I did not eat very good. I only craved everything sweet and all that stuff, so I just felt like I'm doomed to have this. <laughs> so I went in and I took the gestational diabetes test at my midwife's office. They said if you don't hear anything from us, you're totally good, everything's fine. The only way you'll hear something from us is if we call you. And well, they called me and said I failed the test. I don't know how, what my score was or anything like that. I didn't ask, but I did fail the test. And I was so down about that. I had to, that means I, that meant I had to go to the hospital and do the three hour test. And I was just nervous about that in itself because after fasting all night and then the only thing you drink, you have is a, this sugary, loaded with sugar drink. And I was like, how can that be good for you? And anyway, I was just kind of nervous about that. So I went in and I was just, like I said, so nervous. I went in and I did the three hour test. It actually went really good. My, I had an incredible nurse. It didn't even hurt. I mean, they drew blood four times and it really was only painful one time. It was, I couldn't complain about the actual test itself. The nurse was so nice and she was so gentle and she did a really good job and she was fast and yeah. But, so that happened, I had to take the second one and then I think it was the same day or the next day, they called with my results for that and I did pass, but my midwife still said, I don't know what my score was for that either, uh, but she did say, probably try to watch your carbs and just your sugar intake in general. So I don't know, was I close to having it or not, but that just felt so much more doable to me to limit my stuff, my carbs and my sugar rather than follow a strict diet for the next 10 plus weeks, whatever it is. But yeah, I was very thankful that I did not have it, but it's kind of been a challenge to, I more than what I thought it would be to limit my my carbs and sugars because like I said, I just love sweets so much and it's not like I've been just pigging out either but I just still feel like I can look at something and I gain two more pounds just from looking at it and I have this feeling I actually have a doctor appointment tomorrow but I have this feeling she's gonna eh, I don't know I've kind of gained a lot of weight so I have this feeling she's gonna say something about it just like watch yourself if you don't want to have a huge baby which I really don't but I just have had a hard time eating as healthy as possible <laughs> So really, there's not that much else that happened that was too major in the second trimester, but I would definitely say it was the best trimester by far. The third trimester, it hasn't been bad at all, 
But I will say there's been a lot more pain overnight. It seems like at night is when I feel the most pain. I have some pelvic pain. My hips have really been hurting when I lay on my sides. Um, just things like that. Random things that have started. And I'm just like, I'm not sleeping very good. And I know that I probably won't ever sleep, or at least for not a long time, I won't sleep good anymore. I won't be sleeping great. <laughs> so I kind of go in spurts where I'm like super excited and then other spurts where I'm like oh my goodness this is going to be so hard this is I don't know what I'm doing I can't do this and I know those are just lies and I actually can do this yes it's going to be hard but I can do it and obviously there's just things I'm kind of worried about the birth itself obviously have no idea how it's going to go my first kid I don't know what to expect I don't have anything to compare it to um it's just gonna be an experience <laughs> But speaking of the third trimester, I would thought I would touch a little bit on my third trimester to-do list because I think in one of my last videos I talked about it that I made a huge to-do list and it was like overwhelmingly long. So, and some of you were asking, let me see your list, I'd love to see it. Um, so I thought, I'll just show you guys what's on my list. So this is my list right here. Um, there are, one, two. 32 things on this list and so far I have eight of them done which is not too bad but <laughs> I did kind of like all the super easy ones that I could do right now just to get some stuff knocked off the list just to make it look not quite as overwhelming but I'm just gonna read the list really quick and then I'll talk about it just a little bit so the first one register at the hospital can we do that how do we do that pack my hospital bags create a labor playlist download contraction timer app Finish the nursery, stock house with essentials like toilet paper, paper towels, things like that. Clean the kitchen out, clean out the bathroom cabinets, clean the house soon before my due date. I want to have the house cleaned. Make freezer meals, make lactation cookies for the freezer for breastfeeding, sanitize and clean the baby things, purchase postpartum supplies, order breast pump, purchase hospital bag supplies, do all the baby's laundry, organize baby clothes by size, Purchase a stand for the Moses basket. Possibly, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that yet. Install the car seat. Plan a final date night. That one's going to be fun. Attend our birth class. Finish reading my books. Purchase crib mattress. Baby shower. Set up my P.O. box, which I did that one. Organize the pantry. Clean out the fridge. Fix my retainer. <laughs> it's so random, but thin my hair. Fix the drain in the kitchen sink, buy a birthing ball, start going to the chiropractor again. So that is the list. I have eight of them done. I created, I started my labor playlist, which I don't know if I'm going to want to have music when I'm at the hospital or not, but I thought if by chance I do, I just want to have some songs thrown together that I like. I downloaded the contraction timer app, which I know it's way too soon for that, but well, at least it should be anyway. I finished the nursery. The nursery is all decorated how it's going to be. I just have a few things I need to get yet, like my crib mattress. That was on here, I think. And I set up my P.O. box, and I have an appointment to fix my retainer. And actually today, I just thinned my hair, so it feels a lot better. And I bought a birthing ball. I actually got one of those peanut balls, but honestly, I don't think it's really big enough, so it's kind of kind of annoyed with that. And I also have an appointment tomorrow to go to the chiropractor as well. But a lot of the things on this list honestly can't really be done till more the end, like all the baby's laundry, the baby shower, and actually a lot of them can't be done until after my baby shower because after that I can actually put all my stuff away, do all the laundry, and organize baby clothes. I thought it might be kind of fun to just show you guys what's on my list, what I have to do yet. I did start purchasing things for my hospital bag and postpartum. I only have two postpartum things, but I wanted to mention before I wrap up this video, one of the things on the list was finish reading my books. There are two books that I'm reading right now that I want to get finished before I have the baby. I'm about halfway done, I'm over halfway done with the one and it's called Becoming Baby Wise and it's all about how to put your baby on a schedule. And I know that that isn't for everybody, but I just, me and my husband are in agreement that we know we want to do that for us and see how it works. We have to just kind of trial and error, see what works for us. But it is seriously so helpful to read a, that book because it has helped, it's already answered quite a few questions that I had, but it is actually linked in my Amazon storefront if you want to check that out in my description box. And the other one is called Holy Labor. I have not started that one yet, 
but I've heard so many good things about it. It's just kind of preparing your mind, I think, spiritually for labor and things like that, which I think is very important. It's more of like preparing mentally is from what I gathered anyway. So that one is also in my Amazon storefront if you want to purchase it yourself. And that is linked down below. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I wanted to talk about, but I don't think so. Anyway, I think I'm gonna wrap up the video here. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know a lot of people have said they like the pregnancy related videos. And to be honest, they're my favorite to make because that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> but I wanna try to do things that interest everybody as well. But yeah, like I said, thank you for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe. It means the world to me. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I'll see you next week on Wednesday. Bye.